All right, today's video is aimed at a very small audience. If you're somebody who has trouble um, seeing a clear dot and a red dot, and you're looking for something that can help you make hits past 100 yards, past 200 yards, and that's not incredibly heavy, these are two optics that you might consider. They're both a little bit outdated, and mainly because of their magnification range, and they're both mostly out of production. Um, so you're looking at a you're looking at a secondary market for both of these. But if you're interested, we will go over these two and see if the, this knife force is worth extra money over this vortex. So let's go over the vortex first. It's both of these optics are 30 millimeter main tubes. Both of them are second focal plane. Both of them are 17 ounces, more or less, as compared to 23, 24 for like a Gen 2, 1 to 6 PST. You're saving about six, seven ounces. So those are the similarities. And then going through the features of the Vortex, we have an adjustable eyepiece back here. It's pretty tight. I don't think it'll be coming loose. Rubber eyepiece in the back. The illumination dial is sort of in the way but Schmidt and Benders have it on their PM2s and those are pretty cool scopes so it can't be too bad. It does have an offsetting in between each setting which is really nice and I would say the reticle is daylight bright. Coming up here you have a fiber optic designator for your magnification level nice and smooth. The turret are the same as any other Gen 1 PST, which is to say they're very, very nice. These are five mil per rotation, so you have a little bit more space than like 10 mils per, per rev. So these turrets are very tactile and little to no slop. They're very, very nice. They're almost too nice for a one to four optic. It does use the shim zero stop system and the uh, turret does go up and down as indicated here so you know which rev you're on. The windage knob is the same, they're very nicely knurled so you can always adjust them very easily. These are mil, one click is two mils um, and the other option is MOA and, and as far as I'm aware those are the only two options, the only two models of the scope. The reticle is just a regular kind of hash mark reticle, not what you're, not what's popular these days with the BDC reticles. Um, I'm a fan of it though. I think you're not tied to a specific barrel length, specific load or bullet. You can just develop your own dope for whatever gun you put this on. So this was supposed to go on an AK and a BDC that's designed for an AR will never work on an AK. So this is very flexible. It can go on anything from a 22, AK, AR, and it'll work just fine. The glass is pretty good, in my opinion. Nothing to complain about. Same for the field of view and the eye box. It's no Gen 2 PST in those, in those areas, but there is really nothing that when you look through it, you don't feel like the glass is of, of a poor quality or that the field of view is tight. In fact, the field of view between these two scopes I want to say it's like a foot apart per the specs. So going to the knife force, you don't have a rubber eyepiece back here, 
but you do have a sort of, I would say, high-end feature in the locking diopter adjustment. So you unlock this whole, whole area back here, you adjust it to your eye, and then you lock it in. So that's something that you should only have to adjust once for your rifle, and then since you lock it in, it'll never come loose. So it's a very nice feature. It does come with an inclu included threaded throw lever that saves you, you know, 50 bucks or something. So that's that's very nice. Nice smooth throw. Uh, 30 mil millimeter tube. And then the turrets, they, there are different options. Some of these uh, come with cap turrets. These are exposed. They're a little bit interesting in that it does have a very nice firm zero stop. But the zero stop limits your rotation to less than one full rev. So you have about 19 and a quarter MOA up. Even though there is more adjustment available in the scope itself, the way the zero stop and this turret set up, it will just not let you go more than one rev up from your zero, wherever you set it. But the zero is very, very firm. Whereas these uh, with the shims, the Gen 1 PSTs are a little bit mushy. They still work, but they're a little bit mushy. Um, the windage non-locking, no zero stop, it's also exposed. And then the illumination on the side, it does have two night vision uh, modes, which the Viper does not. We did not test it, so I'm not, I can't really speak to how good or how bad that feature is. And then you have your regular daylight modes. You do not have an offsetting in between. That, that's uh, a minus, in my opinion. And the reticle, or the illumination, excuse me, is not daylight bright. When it is dark enough for you to see the illumination, the center dot is illuminated, and then just it bleeds off a little bit down into the BDC. The BDC on my rifle did not really line up that well, but that's why you have, I think, the exposed turret. And the way I would use it is you would aim at, it, let's say, 300 yard target, put it on the three in the BDC, and figure out if you're off two and a half, three, four M way or whatever, you write that down, and then you just next time you know you hold three, dial three M away, and you should be on target. So in summary, there really is not that much of a difference between this thousand dollar knife force and this four hundred dollar vortex. Um, this one's a little bit shorter, maybe looks a little bit cooler. Um, but in terms of glass quality, I think how usable they are, eye box, reticles, turrets, they're very, very similar. This is just an inch shorter and it has the night vision setting. Um, but if those two things don't matter to you, it's really hard, I, I think, to pass on the PST um, for the night force. In this case, there just is not that much of a difference, if any, um, just for everyday use everyday range use so i would urge you to take a long hard look at the pst get that and see if, if this is even something that you, that you want to pursue i want to four optic on your rifle instead of sinking a bunch more money into a knife force that does not do that much more let me know what you guys think if you guys have any experiences with these two optics I'm sure someone will say that, you know, this is battle proven or whatever. Um, I can tell you that with the PSTs, we not, have not had any issues. We've had a couple of them, Gen 1, Gen 2. And personally, for how I use them, they're more than okay.